now the lies have become the discourse. The positive discourse is now the lies. So a Muslim should not follow that path. Our understanding of how should be different than the Western one. Because the Western one, by the way, the Muslims, they, we don't have any question with the directions. All the directions don't follow. West, East, North, South. When I say West, actually I mean the secular mind. A mind which is broken off from Allah. Therefore, which lost everything uh, supreme and sacred. Ideas, behaviors, even wars. We have in Islam the law on wars, you know. It's a separate branch of law. So we cannot kill women, elderly, peaceful people. You cannot even hit the face of any enemy. This is hard, for example. But then, on the other hand, you, you know people who use power for everything. You see it nowadays. Okay. Actually, there are three ways to power. For people as well as for the, the communities and societies. You have power when you know something. For example, for example, I'm a musician, modestly, but I know a bit, a bit about it. So, this is your power. Or you are an engineer, you know your field, so you, are, you have power in that. So the people, they come and ask you, so you have influence over them. So knowledge is very important. And then secondly, producing something. I don't mean industrial production, not even the knowledge production. I mean just to make an effort to put something out which you know it. Okay? To, to show your actions and to put uh, concrete results. And the critical ingredient is managing. You may know things very well, you may produce the things very well, but if you cannot manage them, you will lose. Look at the Gulf states today. They don't know anything. <laughs> they produce a lot. And they don't manage anything. So who are they? How do you call them? Harry. Harry. This is the definition of slave. You produce, you don't know anything about it. And you cannot manage it. You serve it to some other guy. So you cannot become a manager, a governor, a sovereign by just putting the word state in your little land. If you cannot manage, this is not good. This is not your property. Okay? So the oil doesn't belong to those states. In many of our countries, including Turkey, don't take it wrong. Even in our many sectors, we don't manage it. So unless you manage it, you cannot claim any power. So the critical way of power is managing. You may have very little knowledge, very little production, but if you know what you do, what you are doing, you are power. And all the great empires of Muslims, Ottomans, the Bukhari, the Persian, Manu, Dalsani, etc., everything. They all start from the little Andalusia because they know how to manage. So they start with little. And then since they know it, they can just come up and be powerful at the end. So there are two types of power, as you know, I'm not going into detail, hard power, population, arms, production, trade, etc. And soft power, which we Muslims we find very uninteresting, as I told you. Soft things we, we don't like. We want to grab the things, etc. And actually the relation between uh, hard power and soft power for a great power like the Ottoman Empire, Roman Empire, today's American Empire. The hard power is, yes, it's a bigger one than any other country, but it is not as big as we exaggerate. I will show you some examples. But the real power they are issuing is the soft one, which is the history, culture, movies, music, values, etc. So it's not your military here, military is here, economy is here, population is here, but it is your actually cultural influence which is more effective. And in a small state, in contrast, any, any country, they are very close and they are very small. So they don't issue so much influence, they don't really extract influence 
abroad and they don't have a really huge power base. Uh, speaking about, for example, American power, when we say America and power, we immediately uh, think of American military, which has become very much active after 1990. Uh, so they are invading countries, you know, they are bombing in towns whenever they want, etc. They kill thousands of people, but they don't lose so much uh, of their troops. But look at that hard power how it may fail, and it's failing. Now look at this map. All around the world, you have around uh, 700 American military bases. 700 bases. In Turkey, we have 81 provinces. It's a huge country, Turkey as well. And this country has 700 bases all around the world. 500,000 troops in 150 countries all around the world. And the total number of troops is two and a half million. Okay? Now, we see that army, that hard power, as unattainable, unshakable, invincible. But look at this news I got from the uh, Army Times. This is an American army, it's a publication. This army, which is equipped most perfectly, which has the highest salaries, in the world, which has been protected by the highest technologies. But then when you look at the human factor, you see that almost around one million troops have some psychological problems. What was the total number of the army? Two and a half million. It's almost half of the army is not really psychologically comfortable. Why? They don't go into war really. The American planes go and uh, bomb. They don't really fight on the ground, you know. But still, such a high number of psychological disorders. Why? They don't even see the fire. So it shows you morally, psychologically, that hard power is failing. The people, they don't want to die. If you don't find any person dying for your cause, you are already defeated. Even if you have the largest army in the world, you are done. All the great empires have collapsed in the same way, including Ottoman. Ottoman. And so, hard power is not everything. Another example of population. Now, back in 2002, the world population age was around this. The yellow ones are younger. When you get pinkish, you are close to death. Like the European ones, they are almost dying. They are too old. Okay? So this was back in 2002. As you can see, Turkey and including all Africa, all Middle East, what we call, they are all yellow. So they are young. Youth means power. Okay? Don't underestimate this. And when we come 2050, the same population age, now many countries in the North Africa, Turkey, Iran, Caucasian and Central Asian countries, India and Southeast Asia, we are all aged. So you have less people to work, more people to consume. Because retired people, they only consume, they don't produce. So it will destroy your economies in spite of how sensible that economy is. So this is the picture of the Islamic world as well in the future. We have to keep our populations young. That's why our Prime Minister always keeps this. Have at least three children. In every event, and the people there are now, of course, finding it funny, but he has this picture in mind, that's why. When you lose the power of population, you are losing your power altogether. So therefore, and there will be a movement from the young places to the old places, because the old people, they won't work. And only the young and dynamic and poor people, hungry people, they will move into new places, even though new place means insecurity. This is a huge risk, actually. People usually don't move. They don't want to migrate. 
see uterus. It's a very tough thing. Many of your, I think, ancestors knew it, whether they moved from one country to another, or from your country to the west, etc., or from uh, your villages to the big towns. Okay, so it's a huge, difficult thing. But when you are hungry, there is no other way. You will be afraid of the hungry man. He can do anything. All the great empires have been killed at the hands of the young and the poor. So, when you look at this picture, you can actually see the future of the world. So, where will be the movement of human beings from south to the north, from Africa to Europe? They won't be able to stop it. Because this industry is going to be looking for young blood. The, uh, they will find every way to, inf to infiltrate your laws, your customs, etc. Because the poor man can think of the things you cannot think, etc. So, population is another problem. And another indicator I usually show to my students, the extent of power is the flagship uh, airlines. Because an airline is a commercial uh, company, they don't fly anywhere which they don't make profit. So your plane should be full. It should be just meeting your costs. So therefore, when a national uh, airline flies as many places as you can see, it means that your power is on all around the world. For example, this is which country's airlines? This is British Airlines. So, you see they fly all around the world, just like in the old good days of the empire. So, who are in an airplane? When you take an airplane, what kind of people are in an airplane? For example, from Karachi to Istanbul, or from Istanbul to Johannesburg. What do you have in, on, on a board? Yes. board. Yes. Students, you yes. poor ones, yes, that are doing like me, unfortunately. You will eradicate to each other. Okay, so you become masters. Okay, so students, tradesmen, businessmen, tourists, what else? Artists, is it the cultural people? Sports people, government people. So can we imagine a plane is carrying all the those kinds of people from one town in a country to another town in another country. So it requires some dynamism. So there should be a flow of interaction between those countries. So it means when you look at the airlines goods, you actually see the power diffusion map. Where that country is actually exerting power and uh, recruiting power. And in contrast, again, this is in France. Again, a huge network. Now, Turkish Airlines, for example, is flying over 220 destinations all around the world, which is in contrast, back in uh, 2000, for example, they only had, I think, hundreds, even less. So it means Turkey is growing influence. Why? Economically, it is vibrant. Politically, it is vibrant. Culturally, it is vibrant. That's why the people, they request, they demand the flight. Abroad, or vice versa. Okay, and when you look at, for example, Iranian air, airlines, you find fewer. So it shows that that country is more close than uh, the global vision. And when you talk about soft power, we have to be careful about discourses. The discourses themselves are power in the modern day. Nowadays, you hear a lot of terminology. Human rights, military coup, isn't it? Uh, democracy, free world. These are all uh, deliberately des designed discourses. And they all represent and contain power in that sense. Can ideas be so powerful? Let me give you an example. What is the sign? Anti-nuclear, yeah. So it is actually a symbol of what? Environmentalism, isn't it? The green movement all around the world. Very good. So as a discourse, it's a good thing. 
I mean, let's care about our environment, don't pollute it, you know, we need it. You may uh, do something wrong in your country and it will harm me, so be careful and let's be you know, concerned about it, very nice. But of course, just like in the case of uh, many, many good ideas, the Western powers, they know how to uh, distort it and use it for their own benefit. So when you look at this map, you will see the nuclear power plants all around the world. What are the concentrated areas? USA and Europe. North America, <coughs> Europe and Japan. Japan. Is it the three centers of nuclear power, mostly? And so the majority is in the West, in Europe and America. So what would you expect the environmental movement to be strongest in those countries? Well, they are like Greenpeace and etc. Okay, they are established there. But when I go out in Istanbul, I see in our uh, squares young people, universities, uh, students, wearing Greenpeace and forcing you to sign something. Once I told the guy, I said, what are you working for? He said, uh, sir, uh, you know, we are against the nuclear power plants in Turkey. I said, how many are there? There is no. <laughs> so, so why am I signing? Why don't you go to, uh, and take it to New York, for example? I said, I live in New York and Washington DC. I haven't seen any Greenpeace activists on the street. Really, I mean, to be frank. But they have <coughs> some of the nuclear power plants. We don't even have one. Armenia has one. You know, at our border, if you see that, it is from the old Soviet nuclear power plants to be leaking at any moment, moment a lot of course. It's a very old one. Armenia has one, which is the poorest country in Europe. We don't have even one. Now our government is building two in Turkey. And these environmentalists, they just got vibrant all over. You know. Oh, Turkey, no, it's very poor. We will lose our environment. And such environmental concerns can be so much manipulated, like this uh, handsome guy, Al Gore, who was the vice president of whom? Clinton. The glorious Clinton years. And the guy has made this documentary. Have you, have you seen it? Anyone seen it? Yeah. It's about what? It's about global warming, environmental concerns, etc. So the guy has received Nobel Peace Prize with this documentary in 2008. Did you know? Yeah. Al Gore. And Al Gore, while a vice president, was the responsible man for bombing of the aspirin factory in Sudan. This guy received Nobel Peace Prize, just like Mohammed al -Barabi. Okay? So, the most polluter of the world, America, and the vice president of that uh, country makes a documentary about pollution in the world. So there have to be some trick. There is a lie, isn't it? And when you watch the documentary, you will understand. He is actually drawing the attention to China and India, saying that, you know, we did very bad things, America, sorry. We are still polluting 25% of all the world's pollution. But don't do it. India and China, no. Sorry. We can do it, don't do it. Why pollution is a derivative of what? Why do you pollute? You don't only smoke cigarettes, you know, to pollute. Uh, what, how do you pollute the air? Industries, isn't it? When you have industries, you have to pollute a little. Not as much as uh, America and Europe. They just uh, put the shit in the, in the world. It's a shit hole now because of them. But the thing is, when China and India is rising, they say, so environmentalism is now being used as a political instrument. It is not anymore a pristine, a nice idea. So whenever you see an NGO working in environmentalism, be careful. They have relations with the governments, mostly. And this is the 
graph that is showing you actually. China and India, as you can see from 1990 up until 2035, they have huge energy needs. They have to find somewhere. Okay? And the West is trying to stop it. So environmentalism is a cover problem. Now let's come to the future and wrap up the uh, lecture. I believe the future world agenda will be consisting of these things. Justice and truth will be the highest on the agenda because as the Western hypocrisy is being revealed more and more itself in the political events in the world, there will be much and much more seeking of justice and truth. So the people, they will be in need of justice and truth and the Muslims should be back when they ask for it. If we are still in injustice and going into lies, we won't be having anything to offer to the humankind. We won't only serve the Muslims. Our duty, our mission in the world is to serve all the humankind. Because we are open to all the humankind. We don't really differentiate. And let's just go one by one. Ideas and values, they also uh, matter. And when we speak about justice, of course, we also mean the international system. Now, our Prime Minister has initiated already, as you know, the reformation of the United Nations system. Because it's a system, closed system, of five. And when they agree on something, they can do anything in the world. But when there are massacres, etc., even if one country abstains, the, there is no sanction about that. So, it's a limited power structure, so we want it to be expanded and to be democratized. So that will be this agenda on the, uh, at the top of the agenda for the future. Secondly, there is the economic part of the same structure, as you know. After the Second World War, three global institutions had their headquarters in America. What are they? United Nations in New York, IMF in Washington DC, and World Bank in Washington DC. So it's not a coincidence that these three centers are in the United States because it is a global power. So they control economic and political agent of the world as such. Now, these uh, Fed, together with the Federal Reserve, of course, they have to reform. So there will be more and more discussion and drive to change this economic system. By the way, do you know how many members are there in the Fed, American Federal Reserve System, which is the center of the growth capitalism? Do you know? It's not a public institution, did you know it? It's not a government agency. It is established by 13 bankers, still, from 1913 on, Fed has 13 shareholders, like Solomon Brothers, JP Morgan, Citibank, etc. So you can understand the Jewish uh, influence and the heads are always Jewish when you look at the Federal Reserve, including today's. So, the Federal Reserve System will face a huge challenge in the coming decades because of many financial constraints. And again, our lovely Gordon Brown, talking to whom? They are having a beautiful time. Who is the old guy? Nelson Mandela, who was the leader of anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. And South Africa had the apartheid treaty backed by what, what country? For a very long, long time. They always blocked the uh, United Nations resolutions against, and, uh, against the apartheid. Which, which country is Britain? The Western? Britain and America. And now when you look at the picture, the, the Prime Minister of the Britain, the same Britain, is congratulating the birthday of Nelson Mandela. This is taken in London, this picture. So, this system of lies, hypocrisy, is coming to an end. We can believe it. Because a human being cannot take so much lies. As you know, the uh, anti-Muslim propaganda and all these political movements, they are rising so much. It means you are building a very tall wall and tall walls are the most vulnerable walls. So, the truth will shatter the, that wall, but then behind the, those uh, walls, 